Yeah, thank you very much for uh, uh, organizing the conference. It's a great pleasure to be here again. It's always fun to come to Trieste. All visits are very nice and productive. So this is a uh, work in progress and uh, the work which has been published and work in progress with the uh, this uh, with the several people listed here. Um, and then, yeah, I'll mention contributions from different papers, which are some of them I already um, in archive, and some will, will appear there soon. So I will discuss uh, large end limits of supersymmetric gauge theories and what we can learn from them from them by uh, studying various dualities. So what, what can, can we learn for uh, for mathematics? So if you're interested in some mathematical applications. So it's essentially a physics talk, but I hope that mathematically oriented part of the audience will enjoy it as well. So um, it's, as always, it's hard to satisfy everyone, but I hope we'll, we'll manage to, to do some of it. So we know from uh, many years of studying uh, gauge theories that if, say, we have a gauge theory with a gauge group of rank n, and then if rank becomes large, then the theory admits a different effective description using different degrees of freedom. And normally, in this limit, uh, theory, it's easier to understand uh, because those degrees of freedom are somehow uh, combined together all different uh, phenomena that theory uh, possesses. But when n becomes large, due to various simplifications from both physics and mathematics, uh, we have a better control of the theory. In addition, when the theory is supersymmetric, we even expect to get even better understanding of the theory. So there's a hope to solve it exactly. And, uh, and of course, the, the, uh, there are many examples in literature in two, three, four, and, and, and higher dimensions when large end limits are extremely useful. And we'll view this paradigm of large end theories in, uh, oops, in the context of uh, three different branches of modern mathematical physics. So the uh, study of integrables, integral many body systems, which I guess we discussed earlier in the, prog in the program. Yeah, I haven't looked at the, uh, at the slides yet, but I'm pretty sure that uh, people talked about all three different, uh, different corners here. So there's a triality between uh, the integrable systems then their descriptions using uh, geometric representation theory uh, and uh, sort of physics of unequal to gauge theories, which uh, sort of uh, break through in this uh, in, in unequal to theories in early 90s, some kind of, kind of encouraged development both here and here. Uh, and ma interestingly, the larger and asymptotics is manifest in all three descriptions. And I'll try to convince you that, I mean, that this is true, and uh, ho hopefully we will be able to see it uh, ourselves today. So more in more detail, uh, uh, here we have, we will be studying some uh, exactly solvable systems we have with n particles, for example, collodger model or its generalizations. And then in the, when number of particles becomes large, it admits a thermodynamical uh, effective description in terms of hydrodynamics, in terms of velocity fields. Uh, this hydrodynamics is famously integrable and it's called uh, intermediate long wave system. Uh, so that, that will be one manifestation. Then uh, on the sort of mathema mathematical side, we'll go look at various algebras and their representations. So for example, a double affine Hake algebra uh, for, uh, for GLN, uh, which was introduced by Chirednik and was studied by other people. Uh, at N, N goes to infinity, it turns out to be a different algebra, which is also known mathematically, and it's called elliptic whole algebra. And it has, connects to many things like a, BPS states counting and uh, all, uh, quantum K theory of Nakajima of, of, of uh, uh, varieties and so on. And then it will admit also some deformations both uh, here and here, and most of them are not even known mathematically. And then in terms of physics, we'll have a stable large end limit of, uh, so we'll be computing some uh, supersymmetric observables in a certain five dimensional theories with possibly topological, with possibly defects. Uh, and we will see that as n goes to infinity, they will admit some nice description in terms of a different theory, where n is already gone because it's infinite. It shouldn't be there, but it will be some E1 5D theory. So let's start with the top corner of the triangle. So we'll, we'll look at, we'll focus on n equals two gauge theories, which admit cyber quitting description in the infrared. Again, I'm pretty sure that we discussed. I'm just going to uh, summarize it for consistency. and. Uh, thanks to original computation by Nikrasov in the early 2000, 
we now can compute uh, observables in ultraviolet and study their properties all over the RG flow, including the infrared. So we can get a well understanding of the macroscopic description of gauge theories uh, from, from, from the ultraviolet uh, description. Um, and then, so Nikita did it for four-dimensional theories uh, with the simple configurations. And then since then, the, the, his work has been greatly extended to uh, different supergravity backgrounds. So he did, he did the computation in the so-called omega background, whereas, of course, you can do it now for spheres. And as uh, many of you in the room know, uh, you can take uh, not a single gauge group, but many, and uh, combine them into quivers and still compute the cyber curve for quiver gauge theories. You can go in the dimensions up and down. So you can take a theory in R4 cross uh, sigma, where sigma is either a point or a circle or a elliptic curve. And then you can go to the dimension down. So, and my illustration today will, uh, oops, my illustration today will have two examples. The three-dimensional theory on a, a C, so Euclidean three-dimensional theory on a complex plane with parameter omega background parameter epsilon one times the circle of radius gamma, and five-dimensional theory on R4 cross the same circle uh, with the two parameters epsilon turned on. So uh, I'll st start with the, uh, so this is a sort of canonical example in this, in this approach, which is the uh, N equals two star quiver gauge theory on uh, C cross S1. So let's first have done, yeah, so let's not think about this epsilon as, so let's say epsilon one is, is, is zero for now, but we consider the following quiver gauge theory. So it has a, its gauge content is U1 cross U2 cross N so one cross UN minus one. So the circle means it's a U group, a unitary group. And the last node has a UN global symmetry. Uh, and to star means that it's, uh, it has the same matter content as N equals four theory in three dimensions, but the supersymmetry is less because uh, the R symmetry is deformed and the deformation parameter of the R symmetry is controlled by parameter T. Uh, which is a uh, exponentiated mass parameter over here. So I'm, I'm skipping the uh, dimension, sort of, I'm, I'm assuming that the radius is scaled to one here. Now, and let's do the, the, do the simple localization computation with this theory. Now, the Lagrangian depends on several parameters. It will depend on masses of the, uh, masses of this n hypermultiplets, and on the Faye Leopold's parameters, which are abelian gauge couplings in each of the gauge groups, in each of the gauge group. And let's look at some simple examples. So let's just take n equals to two. So it's a U1 theory with the two hypermultiplets. Uh, so, and then uh, the relevant part of the partition function, which is not even the full partition function, but yet yeah, anyway, relevant, relevant for my discussion is given by a uh, Q hypergeometric series of, uh, so it depends on the rate on the um, failure post parameter of this U1 or equivalently on the Keller class of the uh, CP1, because we can think of this as the, as an academic quiver variety, this is the cotangent bundle to the, uh, to the complex, to, to the complex projective space. Uh, and it has three parameters, the T, so this ABC in the hypergeometric series, they depend on the two star mass and on the fundamental masses of the, uh, of this, uh, of, 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 of these two hypermultiples. Now, if you sort of, and, and the Q is the exponentiated uh, omega background parameter. So this is a hypergeometric series. It, uh, it, in other words, it's called a vortex partition function. So it's a sum over all topological sectors with all number of vortices start, starting from zero to, to, to infinity. Uh, and a remarkable thing about this function is that it satisfies, uh, it's a eigenfunction of the integrable system, which is called trigonometric Roisinger-Schneider -Schneider system. So in other words, if you take the operator, which is a shift operator in a, Faye-Leopold's parameters, which are parameterized this way, uh, and weighted by some uh, rational functions of t and tau, or trigonometric function of, uh, well, log tau and, and, and the mass, that's why it's called trigonometric, although you can write it as a rational function, uh, acting on, the, uh, on this b, on the vortex partition function, gives the sum of the masses of the, of the, of the hypermultiple. So, you know, so in other words, the, the, it, this systems, the phase space of this integrable system is the parameter space uh, of the, uh, of the, of the, of the uh, va vacuum, va vacuum manifold of this gauge theory in, in, in three dimensions. And this is, you can generalize it to more generic, so you can consider more generic quiver for the, so for the full, uh, what we call, what's called TUN quiver, with geometric description is the uh, cotangent bundle to the complete flag variety in, in, in n dimensions. 
uh, the same formula is true. So you have a family of operators, uh, n of them, so then uh, corresponding to n different Hamiltonians in the integrable system, they act on this vortex partition function or holomorphic block, how some people call it, of the gauge theory. And the eigenvalue is the uh, VEF of the uh, Wilson line of sort of electric, op electric line operator uh, in the corresponding representation where the degree k corresponds to the skew-symmetric power of, of the fundamental of un. Uh, right, so it's also, it's been known for some, for some while now that those Hamiltonians, that can be thought of uh, quantizations of uh, certain va vacuum expectation values of toothed vortex loops uh, in, uh, uh, in, 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 in this three-dimensional theory. So if this is a Wilson loop, then uh, on the left, it's like a toothed loop. So it's uh, com composed of magnetic degrees of freedom. Uh, and and sort of, it's sort of, it, this equation shows that there's a conjugation uh, sort of the, if you hit with the sort of magnetic and electric variables are in some sense uh, canonically conjugated to each other. So one of them can be thought of momentum and the other can be thought of coordinates. And uh, there is a very uh, the precise way to, to, make, to make this happen. Uh, additionally, the sta this, this statement itself can be understood as, uh, so we can think of the three-dimensional three gauge theory that, that we have here as a certain S-duality wall in four dimensions. And then uh, sort of you can take a four-dimensional theory with coupling tau on the left of the wall and coupling minus one over tau on the right of the wall. And then so you could just require that the three-dimensional theory that lives on the interface has to be exactly this guy here. Uh, and sort of many nice properties of the theory follows from, from this construction, but I will need them uh, at the moment uh, or later. Uh, so mathematically, what, what we have found is that the, there's an additional ingredient which is not present in the gauge theory per se, but sort of if you can construct it uh, with, with the additional input, that the Hamiltonians of this n-particle trigonometric model, they form a commutative subalgebra in uh, double affine Hecke algebra for GLN. So it's a, I'll, I'll give you an example on the next slide, but essentially uh, there's a subalgebra uh, in, in Daha, which is formed by, by those Hamiltonians, and then you can study representations of those, of, of, of Daha just by inducing representations from its commutative subalgebra. So let, let me, let me, uh, be more specific on that part. So let's take, uh, consider the n equals two star gauge theory on R3 crosses one with gauge, gauge group UN, which is exactly the four dimensional lift of that theory. Uh, because sort of we are adding extra direction and you'll see why we need that. Now, the, uh, the moduli space of vacuum of this theory is parameterized by uh, vacuum expectation, expectation values of line operators that wrap the compact circle. And of course, uh, there are several of There's an electric line, there's a magnetic line, and there are various dionic lines, which sort of have both charges turned on. So let's see what, what this is. In, in this case, uh, equivalently, you can understand, think of it as the uh, moduli space of flat GLNC connections. Uh, C means the complex C. Uh, on the torus with, with one puncture, and this puncture has to be simple, meaning that it's a monodromy matrix has only one distinct eigenvalue. And the claim which was made by Alexei uh, Blomkov is that, at least for rank one, for, for like for SL2, uh, the deformation quantization of the space in the same sense that I described before, namely that the, if you declare that magnetic variables are canonically conjugated to electric variables with the obvious sort of quantization condition, uh, then uh, the this quantization of this deformation quantization of this moduli space would be spherical double affine Hick algebra for for the group, for the for GLN, for 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 AN. So let me uh, let me show you the example. Let's do SL2. So just we trace out the uh, GL1 part. Now we have SL2 flat connections. So there are three three generators in the algebra. It's uh, the holonomy around the A cycle, holonomy around the B cycle, and uh, we can either take the holonomy around the puncture, or we can take the uh, holonomy around the A cycle and then B cycle again. So and then holonomy around the puncture will be a linear combination of, this, uh, combination of these three guys. And if you wor work out the algebra, yeah, so then here x would correspond to the VEF of the Wilson loop, which in my previous notations was something like uh, mu plus mu inverse. If you say that mu1 is equal to mu and mu2 is equal to mu inverse. Uh, 
then uh, the operator y is the this trigonometric Rosenar Schneider Hamiltonian. It's also known as symmetric McDonald's operator. Uh, and the, uh, the, the, so classically, the moduli space is this cubic. It's a cubic in C3, so it's given by single equation in three dimensional complex space, so it has dimension two. So for rank one, the dimension of the moduli space is two. And V, V corresponds to the uh, Holon Miranda puncture, so it's, uh, its eigenvalues are uh, V is basically T and T minus one. Good. Uh, now, the quantization, uh, so now it's now basically declare some commutation relations, basically saying that, so in this case, quantization is really obvious. We just take X and Y, Q commutator is equal to uh, Q minus Q inverse times Z, uh, and then plus cyclic, uh, cyclic permutations of this relation. So there are three commutators, and they all look like this. And you can clearly see if, if Q becomes one, then uh, everything becomes commutative again. But this is not the full story. The, all, you need also to specify the Casimir. Well, it's not really Casimir, but in the case of Dacha, but something that, that is central. So you can show that the, uh, basically, you can see that this omega, which is again cubic in x, y, and z, can be thought of as a certain quantization of the left-hand side, uh, left-hand side of this formula. Uh, I might have messed up the sign. I think there should be a minus in front of the cubic term. But essentially, you need to put q's in the right powers in the right places, and uh, you get you get the Casimir, and it turns out it's the it's the generic story, and the uh, the, the Casimir has to satisfy sort 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 has to satisfy some relation which I'll uh, connect to later, but uh, it, it's it's it has to be essentially uh, in general it depends on the eigenvalues of x, y, and z, whatever they are, but then something nice would happen as the we specify the various Casimir to this on this locus. So this is very nice, but how does it appear physically? So it's in, intuitively you can understand it very, very, very cl clearly. So uh, again, quantization in physics language corresponds to introducing omega background uh, on the previous slide. So here there was no omega background. It was just R3 cross S1, and we got the moduli space of flat connections. Quantization uh, supposed to take in R2 inside of R3 and then introducing the uh, Equivalent, equivalent deformation uh, for this for this R2. So you get R2 epsilon cross R cross S1. And it's it's uh, useful to think about this. Uh, R2 is the cigar. So there's a tip, uh, and there's S1 action at infinity, which, the, which ro rotates the cigar, and Q again is e to the epsilon 1. And now we can reduce along the uh, action of the circle. So the cigar becomes a ray. So it's, uh, we live in a half-dimensional space. Ignore these Bs for a second. So think of it as the kind of infinite line, uh, and then there's a half plane above, and this is the uh, world volume of, the, of, the, of our theory. And the circle is not shown, so there's basically half space times R, uh, excuse me, half space times the, time, times the circle. And now those line operators, they wrap the circle over here, uh, and they're forced to sit at the tip of the cigar because of the way omega background works. Now, so, which means that in this picture, they all have to sit at this um, bottom, at the real line, which is on the boundary of the half plane. And now, because they sit on the boundary, you cannot see, uh, move them around anymore. Basically, when you have two operators colliding, and you want to understand what, what it means to sort of permute them, there's a price to pay. Basically, you need to add some power of Q and uh, introduce the Q commutator. So this is a sort of very generic approach of see how various affine Hecke algebras appear in this deformation quantization story. Any questions so far? Uh, yeah, and then uh, what about those brains that if you have, uh, if you want to study representations, you have to put some boundaries. Uh, so it replaces R by an interval or by a half interval, and then you can have some left boundary and the, and the right boundary. And uh, the sort of the representations of this DAHA, of this algebra would be certain uh, Ho can, can manage it in sort of, uh, certain home spaces from uh, various brains, like from this BCC brain to B brain, uh, which lives on the boundary, and brain corresponds to, to a certain boundary condition. Uh, I'm not going to go further, deep, further into this. It's still work in progress, but uh, uh, essentially, to understand algebra, it's enough to, to live in infinite dimensional space. To understand, to understand representations, you have to introduce boundaries. Uh, and then, uh, different boundary conditions which cor correspond to specifying the weights uh, which we have introduced, which come from the uh, monodic Miyagin values. Okay. 
So this is a story about Daha, how it appeared. Now, we need to generalize our setup to elliptic models. So we take, uh, so in order to describe more, gen more, gener more generic system, we can introduce extra parameters. So before we just had a Q and T, uh, so T was the exponential of the mass and Q was the omega background parameter. How about introducing one more? So it turns out there is a very canonical and uh, nice way to do it uh, using, the, using defects. Uh, and the trick is to take our favorite theory from the first slides and uh, gauge the global symmetry at the last node by the gauge group of a theory in five dimensions. And we met, met, match other parameters as well. So the two-star deformation of the theory corresponds to the mass of the hypermultiplet uh, in, this, in this theory. So it's basically n equals 2 in five dimensions. So it's again, it's a theory with the maximal supersymmetry. And we deform it uh, by, uh, by half by turning on some mass parameter. So we have, in other words, we have a five-dimensional theory in C cross, C cross, cross the circle. And then there is a defect, three-dimensional defect, that lives in the first factor and the circle. And it's a point at the origin of the second, of the second factor. Uh, and the uh, sort of, once, once we've done that, uh, we sort of, we can think of it as the deforming, the, uh, deforming the algebra of chiral observables in three-dimensional theory. Basically, if you have a BPS correlators between two operators denoted by these green dots, the, there are two, if you think about it, if you think about it perturbatively, there's exchanges governed by the coupling constant of 3D theory, the T, and also by the coupling constant of the five-dimensional theory, the P. So there's like exchange through the bulk, which you have to take into account. Uh, and luckily, there's again, uh, sort of using the construction of ramified instant ones, uh, it can be done very robustly. Uh, I'm, I'm skipping uh, many details here. So we did it in a paper with uh, Hitchell and uh, Matt Bullimore a couple of years ago, uh, which was based by work by Satoshi Navata, and then used some results from Aldai and Tachikawa, and also um, Okunkov and uh, Braverman, Finkelberg, Nakajima. So it goes quite far into the math literature, but uh, sort of we did explicit computation for five-dimensional theory. And the generalization of the uh, integrable system is very straightforward, so the, the operators, so the, the 5D, 3D partition function, which is now a function of all these parameters, including the five-dimensional uh, gauge coupling, is again an eigenfunction uh, of the elliptic integrable system, whose operators look similarly to what we have, except that instead of trigonometric functions, we have elliptic functions. And the ellipticity parameter is controlled by the 5D gauge coupling, such that if you kill it, then you go back to the trigonometric version, and then in terms of this theory, it means that you completely decouple 5D degrees of freedom. Uh, yeah. And the eigenvalue, again, is the same vacuum expectation value of the Wilson line corresponding representation. And to make this equation work, you have to send epsilon 2, the parameter in the complex plane which does not belong to the world volume of the defect, to 0. So that's where integra so integrability happens in the nekrasov stasfield limit. If you go away from the castle stuff limit, you get something more generic, uh, which was described by Peston and Kimura, but uh, if you have time, you can comment on that too. Good. Uh, questions? No. Yeah, so just to give you a, a sort of glimpse of what this function looks like. Now, the, the, uh, so when P is zero, we have a single series. So yes, it's a double series in uh, KL parameters on the defect, or the Heliopolis parameters, and in the sort of inverse Kähler parameters, uh, and sort of they're weighted by the gauge coupling of the five-dimensional theory. So you can see that if p goes to zero, we go back to the single hypergeometric series that, 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 that we had before. And similarly, the Wilson line, so here, uh, so what stands on the right-hand side, it's again a uh, certain equivariant localization expression. So here we have, uh, so the partition function stays on the bottom, it's a normalization. And then to compute the Wilson line, we introduced the fundamental equivariant character, which uh, accounts for the heavy BPS particle that propagates in the circle. And again, its uh, expression is basically the, uh, the, the, the three-dimensional version of the sum of the masses, and then it's multiplied by a P-series, so which sort of count, accounts for instanton corrections from the bulk, from, from, from the bulk description. Okay. Good. Uh, 
just to summarize what we have discovered so far, the, there's a table of dualities between, uh, yeah, and the, the, this model is called the uh, elliptic, elliptic Horizonar Schneider. So the trigonometric, we had trigonometric Horizonar Schneider and, and, and elliptic Horizonar Schneider, RS. So in elliptic RS, we have uh, n particles, positions tau with interaction tau, and the Planck constant, which is the shift parameter Q, elliptic deformation P, and it's mapped onto the, uh, well, it should be P here, yeah, I don't know why it didn't show, it was showing it on my slide. Uh, anyhow, so it's a, uh, you can see it here. So the number of particles is mapped to the rank of the gauge group or the flavor group in three dimensions. The uh, FI terms are mapped to the particle positions and the mass is mapped to the coupling. Uh, Q is the omega background and the elliptic parameter is the 5D instant on parameter. And again, eigenvalues and eigenfunctions are given by Wilson loops and the partition functions. Now, I promised you to show something about large N now, to understand large n, we basically need to take separately the large n limit of the eigenfunction and I like large n limit of the eigenvalue and the operator, uh, to be precise. And that, that, has to be done, that, ha that has to be done separately because I thought I convinced you with the Daha story that the, the sort of the, this uh, brain picture with Daha is that algebra and, al algebra and the Hilbert space, they go, uh, they, can go, they go separately. So you need to understand limits uh, in each, uh, sort of, you need to understand large, large, large and limit for, for each of them. So let's start with the states because it's somewhat easier. So let's consider a partition lambda of number k which is less than n. And in this, uh, in this approach, I assume that the p uh, elliptic parameter is turned off. And then I'll just show you the answer when it's turned on. And now let's make a specification of the mass parameters. These guys are, or as I told you, weights of Daha representations eventually to the following locus. So it's Q to the lambda A, where lambda A are columns of the partition lambda times T to the N minus A. Okay, and uh, so this will be for this uh, flag, for the flag theory. And interesting thing happens. So, so uh, recall that the, so Q is the uh, E to the H bar and T to the E to the mass. And then if you remember, if you re uh, remember the expression from the Casimir in Daha, uh, you, can, you can see that the specification of these masses as so, would somewhat remind you the expression which you had for omega there. So in fact, it's exactly the same sort of locus where representations of double affine algebra, which are in general infinite dimensional, they truncate. Uh, and then so you can try to classify them, what are the all possible conditions of truncation. So it's again, it's a nice uh, geometric representation theory story. But anyhow, so just to just, uh, we don't need it at the slide. Uh, what happens if you do this specification is that the partition functions, the vortex partition functions become polynomials. And not just any polynomials, they become McDonald polynomials. Because it's not surprising because the operators are McDonald operators and just looking at uh, eigenfunctions within different Hilbert spaces with different boundary conditions. So if it's a polynomial function, uh, then it has to be a McDonald polynomial for the uh, partition lambda. So let's take an example of k is equal to two. So there are two choices. Uh, we can have a column, a row, and we have a column. Uh, the exact form, of course, depends on n. So for example, for, for the column, we have a degree two polynomial, which is symmetric in tau one and tau two, and it depends at q and t as a rational, um, as, as, uh, as a rational function. Of course, when it explicitly depends on n, it's not, uh, it's hard to, send n to infinity because you have to compute any case, any n sort of set up uh, by hand. Uh, so let's do something clear, something more sort of appropriate in this case. So and turns out that turns out that we can make a change of variables. Uh, we can sort of give up symmetry of the polynomials sort of, then the SN, XN group action is not manifest, but instead it, it will be easier to take the large, large n limit. So let's take the, uh, this change of variables, P sub m. I hope you want uh, sort of, the, 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 there's a p in the elliptic coupling parameter. We're not gonna. These these are different p's. Uh, we have this monomial change of variables from so there's some from one to n, uh, and then the, in in this in this formulation in terms of p's, the uh, the shape of McLaurin polynomials only depends on the partition, and does not depend on the on n on the number of on on the on the degree in the previous slide. So you have this one for the for the row and this one for the column. And since it's true, it's uh, more or less straightforward to construct the space of states uh, in our uh, system. Uh, so we start with some fork vacuum over here. 
And then we hit it with creation operators. And creation operators will be built by P lambdas. So we have a tableau lambda with the columns from 1 to L. Then you just act with a string of corresponding creation operators on the vacuum to create a state. Uh, and uh, because we can sort of, we can construct a McDonald's polynomial of arbitrary degree by sort of truncating uh, the weights at the uh, arbitrary higher position, then sort of we will be able to sort of We'll, we'll sweep out the full, uh, the full Hilbert space of states. And you can work out the algebra that from the orthogonality of McDonald polynomials, these operators has to commute uh, as, su as, as such. So the, it's a deformed Heisenberg algebra, which has two parameters, Q and T, in the right-hand side. Um, and then the relationship is more, more involved if you turn on the elliptic parameter P. Good. So in, I, I just summarized what I said. So in sense, the vortex series, which, is, which comes from the 3D uh, gauge theory, uh, it in, encodes all the states uh, in, this, in, in, in this Hilbert space. Of course, if you have 5D theory, then you have to, like, you basically do the same, but then uh, there will be series instead of polynomials. And, but uh, I'm going to sk skip it up over here. Question? No. no. Right. Uh, now, the, to understand the eigenvalues, we, use, uh, we can employ the uh, free Boson realization of this integrable system, which was sort of developed by Dean Yohar, and then there, there was some follow-up papers. So we basically, we introduced two currents. Uh, one of them is the, uh, so we should call eta, which is the normal ordered order product of this exponential. You can also write it as a p exponential, as in uh, uh, Eric's talk. And then there's another current, phi. Uh, which has a different different function here, and then we have n variables, and we just uh, sort of package the spice together. Now, uh, and then so we create a state, which is just the action of this phi n onto the onto the Fock vacuum, and it turns out that the state is an eigen eigenfunction of two operators at the same time. The uh, the operator, which is the first coefficient in, fr coefficient in front of uh, z to the first power in this current, so you, after you expand it, do the normal ordering. We get some operator. You can see that its eigenvalue is the same as for the McDonald operator with the corresponding uh, data, weighted by this rational function and plus t to the minus n. And now, assuming that uh, the t is inside the union circle, then uh, you, you can take the larger limit here, so the first factor disappears, and then we get a nice stable limit out of the uh, out of the after, out of the remaining piece. Uh, so uh, later I'll show you what, what exactly this expression is, but the claim is that the limit exists and it's finite, and you can compute it for any uh, for, for any values of parameters. Uh, in the elliptic case, you need to modify the currents a little bit. So I'm, I'm showing you only eta part. Basically, you need to take this operator and then sorry, take this exponential and multi multiply it by another one, which depends on p. And again, you do the same game. You take the normal order product. The phi is even more complicated. I'm not showing it on the slide. After you have done the same, you can take the large and limit to get, yeah, so then uh, the expression will be replaced by more complicated function uh, involving p parameters. Uh, and again, uh, the, this, is the stable the, this is the stable limit. Uh, so, and then so just to connect with the first part of the talk, we can see that the, uh, the vacuum expectation value of the Wilson loop, say in fundamental representation, at the log with lambda, log was given by the partition lambda, is mapped to the, uh, with proper normalization, is exactly uh, this uh, expression on the right-hand side. So in other words, uh, so we found the recipe to compute the large limit of the eigenvalues. So we take the Wilson line, multiply this by this, weight, by the, by this function, by the simple rational function of t, and, uh, and take the limit n to infinity. So we will get we'll get the finite answer. Now uh, I don't have much time left, so ah, I, th I think we're good. Yeah, I just I thought I, I'm finishing at 2:30, but the uh, so I just want to make a little digression to describe what is the equivalent description of the uh, integrable money body system at large n, and what kind of energies have we just computed. Uh, so, in other words, if, it, if there are infinitely many particles, what else does this do the formulae, which I showed in the previous slide, describe? And the answer is given by the so-called intermediate long wave model, which is a uh, one-dimensional hydrodynamical system. So we have two fluids uh, in a channel. It can be either uh, infinite, infinite, or it can be periodic. So we can sort of 
for the periodic boundary conditions, and we study fluctuations on the interface between the two fluids. They have different densities, and uh, one of them is bigger than the other. Uh, the height of the channel is given by, by H, and it all uh, happens in the gravity field. So, and uh, depending on the wavelength of the fluctuations, there are three different regimes which are quantitatively different and qualitatively. Uh, so when it's uh, lambda is much bigger than the height, it's so-called long wave regime, and it's described by famous court vector freeze equation. Uh, in the short wave regime, we get the so-called Benjamin Ona, and in the full generality, when uh, these two parameters are of, of the same order of magnitude, we have what is known as the full intermediate uh, long wave system. Quantitatively, it's described by uh, integral differential PDE, well, PDE with whatever, whatever this guy is. So it's, uh, it's basically the, evolu uh, the, the uh, so we introduced the velocity field, which depends on coordinate and on time, and the equation is ut equals 2xx minus uh, sort of Laplacian applied to the integral transform of the velocity field such that the kernel of the integral transform is the Weierstrass zeta function. Uh, and then again, there's some ellipticity parameter p here, which, as you may guess, will rate, later be related to elliptic parameter in gauge theory. Uh, so this uh, kernel admits some nice limits. In one of the limits, when uh, yeah, in the one of the limits, you get Benjamin Ono when the uh, Weierstrass function is replaced by a rational function. Uh, so there's a re representation when you have an infinite sum of when the denominators are shifted, and in this limit, only one piece remains. And in the KDV limit, you get some derivative of the delta function. So, and because of the delta function, actually, it can do the integral. And that's how you can get uh, ux, xx in the right-hand side. And it's a good exercise to show it explicitly. But what's interesting about this, this system is that it's integrable for in, even in the most generic case. So if you, have, if you declare the Poisson commutation relations for equal time velocity fields as the derivative of the delta function, then you can, re, then you can rewrite the... Um, we can rewrite the LW equation as the evolution equation, where I2 is the, is the Hamiltonian, which in this representation is a very non-local operator. So it's integral of the integral transform of the function itself. So it's genuinely, genuinely non-local. But nevertheless, so I2 is non-local, and all higher, higher Hamiltonians are also non-local, and they all, they all commute with each other. With each other. They're all in, 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 in evolution. So, you know. uh, Turns out that we don't need the whole story. Uh, we don't need the full spectrum of ILW. Rather, we only need that, uh, we only look at the solitons that, that propagate on the interface. So we'll be looking at the solitonic spectrum. Uh, now, one can impose the, this ansatz, which is very restrictive. So we have, if the velocity field factorizes as such, so it's like, it's a sum over from one to n uh, of rational function, which, ha which has a pole. Uh, and position of the pole is time dependent. So, so basically, there are n particles which, are descri which describe centers of those solitons, and they move around, uh, move around in the fluid. And then you can take this n that's plug it into the equation, the ILW equation, and see that the consistency, ch consistency condition for this n that's to go through is described by the equations of motion for, uh, in this case, for in the Benjamin Ono case, by Kaloger Moser model. So the, this is basically F equals MA equation for, uh, for, this, for particles in this model. So it's the acceleration of the particle uh, given by the force, which is the basically nabla, nabla V, but the potential is uh, inversely quadratic, uh, depends on one over A minus A squared. So the poles describe propagation of solitons. Uh, so if you take, now we need to take a generalization Instead of taking the ILW model itself, we take a difference ILW. And difference ILW correspond to promoting Laplace operators to difference Laplace operators. So this difference operator will sort of enable us to describe the elliptic model that elliptic gauge theory, uh, sorry, ellipt elliptic integrable system that we have started with. So if you, instead of ILW, consider difference ILW, or difference ben Benjamin on, you're going to get relativistic models. like. For difference LW, you get relativistic algebra or trigonometric RS model. Uh, for difference ILW, you're going to get elliptic RS model if you do the same procedure. Uh, and you can basically pick any model. You can pick your favorite integrable system 
and there will be thermodynamical limit, the hydrodynamical limit of this model. In other words, there is a duality, uh, so you can start with either hydrodynamics and look at solitons, and you'll discover some n body integrable system, or you can start with integrable system and then send into infinity to get a, to get a thermodynamical limit. So large analytic algebra will get you, give you intermediate long wave system, uh, and elliptic RS model, which comes from five dimensional theory, uh, n equals one star five dimensional theory, it will become finite difference ILW model. Oops, okay. So that was the uh, large end description, the uh, story in the lower left corner uh, of, of, of the first slide. So now, now, now let's, we need to understand what happens in the top, uh, in the top corner. What is the effective gauge theory description uh, of UN theory? So we can get some, we can get some insight from M theory and from topological, topological strings from geometric transitions. So let's start with uh, M theory on the circle cross CQ cross CT cross T star of S3. So this is a deformed conifold uh, with a deformation parameter related to the area of S3. Then the, um, so and Q and T are the same Q and T that we had in gauge theory setup. Now, and we put N M5 brains uh, on, on the circle cross CQ cross the base of this, of this fiber. Now again, so, if you, uh, the compact manifold again here is needed to describe the transition to understand some properties of the large and limit as I showed you, you don't need compact manifold, you just can basically replace it by R3. But to get, to get the full story, you have to compactify part of those things. Anyhow, so the, as we know, the NM5 brains will give, some, give rise to some gauge theory in the low, low energy description with rank N. Now let's send N to infinity and see what happens. And again, you can also see that the, because of the, the, CT, the, the T parameter, which deforms one of the complex plane in the complementary directions, the R symmetry of the theory is, is deformed. So it's, it's broken to a subgroup, uh, and you can convince yourself that it's exactly the same pattern of uh, breaking that, that we need for uh, 5D and plus one star theory. Now, as n goes to infinity, we go through the Gepakumar Waffer large end transition, and the M theory on. Uh, this setup with brains, sorry, with M M5 brain, but with, with brains becomes M theory on a different uh, background, essentially the same five dimensional space times uh, resolved conifold, which, which you call Y, and there are no brains, so N, N is gone. Uh, and now we can just make a reduction on this Y on the, on the conifold, and because there's a, the, the base, the, the, the P1 uh, in the fiber of this conifold, we'll get some theory with a single uh, vector multiplet, the, uh, with so the theory with eight supercharges with one vector multiplet that lives on S1 cross C cross C. So you're gonna have some five dimensional theory with, uh, with, with, with eight, eight, eight supercharges. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna count uh, instantons uh, in this theory. In other words, yeah. So there's, a, there's an equivalent description uh, within perturbative string theory, which makes, uh, some formulae, uh, which I showed you before, very sort of, uh, sort of, which emphasizes the role of some formulae, uh, including the formula for the Casimir. So in type 2A, you can describe the theory as a, a stack of default brains, which are the Coulomb branches separated uh, in these directions, and then they're helically winded, so they're winded around, so they're periodic, but, uh, and they end on the, the same single NS5 brain. From, which is from, from, from zero to five. And the endpoints of these default brains, they are shifted by, uh, by the mass parameter of the two star theory. So once the, when this is gone, you get the maximal supersymmetric theory because NS5 can be decoupled, but not, not in this case. And once the mass parameter is arbitrary, nothing fancy happens. You just have a Coulomb branch of this theory, which you can study, which is known manifold. But, um, Let's see what happens as we, again, take the values of the masses in a special way. Uh, so it's sometimes called Higgs branch locus, or it goes with different names, but essentially it's the same specialization that we did for McDonald polynomials and the same specialization that we did for Daha Casimir. Uh, and then again, so you can show that uh, this written proper variables, it coincides with the quantization condition for uh, Gepakumar-Waffe transition. So there should be a certain relation in terms of string coupling between uh, area of S3 and the radius of P1, 
right? Uh, and this is exactly what, 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 you, what, what you need to have. So, and sort of a large end transition, well, the transition would move you from this picture to, to this kind of picture. Uh, and this is what happens. The, all these guys combine together, so they rejoin, and the, uh, the, the default brains, essentially this brain connects to this half brain, so this brain connects to this brain here, and then so on and so forth. And we have a single helical default brain, uh, which winds around all the way from top to bottom. And then once we do that, we can sort of turn on the, we can go into the Higgs branch by uh, changing the uh, radius of the P1, which in, which in this sort of notation corresponds to the length of those D2 brains. And additionally, there are two types of D2 brains. So there is a brain, uh, there's a D2 brain which is orthogonal to the D4 brain and ends on D5 brain. And there's also what is called D2 prime brain, which is embedded inside D4, such that the sort of brain charge is conserved. And then you need to carefully count how many brains uh, each sort are connected, but basically, there's a junction of the two brains and total charge should be zero if you count brains and anti-brains uh, in a proper way. Okay, so this is it and the delta is the angle, basically it's angle where the spiral winds, right? And so basically, oops, it's given by the tangent of delta is given by the ratio of the basically 5D gauge coupling or one over the radius with the mass parameter. And now let's do large end limit. Uh, it's kind of hard to, again, you have to do some tricks. So instead of sending number of brains, sort of, instead of extending this picture to infinity like that, we can introduce a scaling such that the height of this spiral does not change, but the density of winding changes. And as you do so, the, uh, the brains here and here, they will be sort of come closer and closer to each other. And in the infinite, infinite end limit, the whole picture will collapse. And then all these D2 prime brains will be coincident. And not coincidentally, the, 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 the total charge of those D2 prime brains is zero because sort of they're formed by brains and anti-brains in, uh, in the neighboring D4 brains. There's no total brain charge of, over here. So once we do that, the NS5 brain decouples and it, it can leave the picture. And so you just have D2 brains <coughs> submerged inside D4 brains. Uh, well, there's uh, some complementary directions, but you can tidalize them away because they're all periodic. And in the, end, in the end, you're going to arrive to the, the same setup, which is the sort of modified ADHM data because there's some periodic directions for single U1, uh, for the U1 instant, for uh, U1 instantons, and the number of instant, the, the topological sector corresponds to the number of the two brains which we have there. And again, so you see those, we have those lambdas. Remember, lambdas were heights of the Coulomb, uh, uh, heights of the Young tableau uh, in that specialization. And the size of that partition determines the topological sector. So we're going to get exactly KD2 brains inside the world volume of the sixth brain, which is the ADHM. Okay, sorry for that. Uh, so we're off to U1 instantons uh, in the non-commutative setup by sort of Nikrasov and Schwartz. Uh, and it turns out that mathematicians have already looked at the spaces before. Uh, in the Heisenberg algebra that we had several slides ago, they already knew that the, it appears independently in this setup. So uh, Nakajima, then Schiffman, Vissero, and some other people, they studied this Heisenberg algebra. In fact, it's a part of a more generic, general, struct, more gen gen bigger gadget, which is called elliptic hole algebra. Uh, and it appears naturally on the, when you study moduli space of U1 instantons, basically. As Eric, Eric Carlson mentioned some of that results today, uh, which I'm not gonna, not, not, not gonna reiterate. reiterate. But physically, you can think of, uh, so we have the five-dimensional theory on R4 cross S1, and then this instanton, it's like a KK monopole that propagates around the circle. And then as you, go, as you wind around, you increase the, the, the topological number by one, or, or equivalently, you can think of some large gauge transformations um, that change the boundary conditions at infinity on this uh, circle cross circle at infinity. Now, uh, the moduli space is given by the ADHM quiver, which we'll, look, which we'll think of as a three-dimensional n equals two theory on C cross S1. So it's, again, it's the same S1 because it was the same on both sides of the, of the transition. 
uh, and it's given by the standard ADHM data. So it's a U1 gauge group for UK, sorry, U1 flavor group for UK gauge group with the fundamental and the fundamental fields and uh, two adjoints. And basically, you just look at spaces of all, of, all, of all homes from here to here and back and homes from UK to UK itself, uh, symplectically quotient by the action of the gauge group. That will give you the uh, modular space of instant answer. In this case, it's the Hilbert space, Hilbert's scheme of k points in C2. Um, that's right. Which is not coincidentally related to the flat connections on the forest. Uh, and then we can compute some compute many things about it. For example, we can study its uh, uh, equivariant quantum cohomology or equivariant quantum k theory. Uh, and using an uh, approach by Nikrasov and Shatashvili, we can do it by studying uh, vacua of the three-dimensional theory with a the quiver that was in the previous slide. So we can we compute the twisted chiral ring just by uh, studying massive vacuo of the gauge theory and then sort of quotiening out by the, uh, by the vacuo equations, which is simply the extremizations of the effective twisted superpotential. So in other words, it's just the Jacobian ring for the effective twisted superpotential. Uh, so you can do it like this. You're going to get contributions from each uh, hypermultiplet. Uh, each, chiral, each chiral multiplet will contribute to the equation. Uh, so it will, be, it will depend on the Fayet Leopold's parameter of the, uh, of the gauge group, which is governed by the same parameter P. So it's, it counts instant on, it, it will be the topological number which will count instant on in five dimensions. And then again, all the parameters here are exponents of what we've seen before. So the Q is the same exponential as before the transition, and then the T now is played by epsilon 2, which is the omega background parameter uh, in the second complex plane in the same 5D, 5D gauge theory. And uh, Fi is given by P, as I said. Um, and what we have checked with Antonio, we had uh, two papers like this year and uh, one paper last year. Oh, paper this year, yeah. So we have two, two papers published where you can sort of convince yourself by explicit computation that the uh, Eigenvalues of uh, Kalodger Hamiltonians, which you can write, in term, which you can write as uh, using free Boson realization, uh, they coincide with the uh, uh, quant so that they describe the quantum mul multiplication in a covariant quantum cohomology of this moduli space. Uh, sort of more explicitly, you can have you can compute a covariant turn character uh, for this for this moduli space, which is this expression on the right. Uh, so, and you can see that for different specializations lambda, the, uh, those characters that take certain values that coincides with the energies of uh, elliptic uh, of the operators, the elliptic Rosen Schneider operators that we discussed in the, fir in the first part. And those, uh, in turn, are proportional, again, as I showed you before, to vacuum expectation values of UN Wilson loops, uh, fun say, here in, 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 in fundamental representation. Uh, as n goes to infinity. So in other words, there's a stable limit which takes you a certain equivariant, to, and then remember that Wilson loop is again comes from some, churn, some equivariant churn, churn character. So there's a stable limit which takes churn characters of uh, basically u infinity instantons and then translate in them into the different churn character for u1 instantons. So the so remarkable thing about it is that you can do the limit just head on on the nose. And, 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 and the limit exists. So in full glory, the duality is given by this table. You have, uh, so basically there are three different parts. There's like integrable system part, which is like, well, ADHM part and the, uh, sorry, yeah, and the, and the gauge theory part at U infinity. And uh, probably the least trivial line here is the first one. So the coupling constant in RS model, the T is, here was the mass parameter of the two, star, the two star mass. However, it's replaced by epsilon two, the omega background parameter in the ADHM theory. And again, sort of large transition kind of explains why this has to be true. Isn't it? Yeah, the epsilon, role of epsilon one stays the same, and then elliptic parameter counts instantons both in U infinity theory and U one theory. And again, I can state some maps straightforwardly according to the rules that 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 that, that we had before. Right, so before I end, I want to throw up some mathematical conjectures, which some mathematicians in the room may like, if they're still here. Uh, 
So, uh, yeah, like I said, the elliptical algebra is the large, large end limit of spherical Daha. Uh, it's a recent paper by Schiffman and Vissero. Then, uh, in the in the trigonometric trigonometric limit, uh, so we can compute the yeah. There is another result which I didn't announce, but essentially, the gauge theory allows us to compute equivalent quantum K theory of those spaces. So, for example, the cotangent bundle to the flag. There's a very straightforward way how to write down what its equivalent K theory is. And if it's a classical K theory, then I'm sorry. The, here it's a quantum K theory of the flag of the star flag, and turns out that the stable limit of this ring of the of this object is classical K theory of the moduli space of all instantons. So essentially you take the direct sum of all topological sectors uh, and yeah we get we get this uh, we get this invariant object. And in, in full story you need to replace it by well this uh, this 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 uh, ring is replaced by something infinite dimensional so essentially we need to add this Q or P some associative algebra which uh, depends on the p on the elliptic parameter, and we need to model out by the uh, integrals of motion of the elliptic RS system. So it's again uh, sort of straightforward generalization of, the, of this ring, and large large end limit of this guy gives uh, gives gives the the uh, full quantum covariant K theory of the instant on moduli space. I'm sure there are more sort of useful ways to make this, this conjectures, but and just sort of trying to emphasize that studying large and large limit turns out to be a very powerful thing to do. Yeah, there are some open questions. Uh, it's like if we can, should be able to generalize it to elliptic homology uh, of the same spaces, or maybe K theory of some infinite dimensional spaces. There's a relationship of what I said to not homology, which I believe was addressed to in uh, Alexei, Alexei's talk. And again, you can still, kill, you can still uh, keep adding further uh, gradings in homology. So right now people talk about quadruply graded homology. Can you, add, can you have, say, one more parameter which corresponds to this elliptic deformation that, that they had? Will we be able to compute uh, something more generic than uh, quadruply graded non homology? Uh, and then instead of 5D theories, we should be able to take 6D theory uh, at large n and it should be described by some holographic construction which people studied in M theory. And of course, there should be some elliptic generalization of Daha, which is, uh, uh, can be used explicitly in, in, in the computations. Good, so since this is the last talk of the workshop, and I want to thank, thank the organizers, and I guess you all joined me. It's so like, I guess you're all tired, but I came rel relatively fresh. So yeah, thank you very much for. Okay.